Viral replication is where you start to see what a virus really is. Beyond the shape of the virion, you look at what they really are. But also, um, it will all start making more sense, and the purpose of the different things will start making more sense. You have to work through some, um, some biology stuff to, to understand viral replication, but once you work through it and understand it, it will fall into place and you will know what a virus is. And most people don't. So let's get into it. So viral replication um, is critical or absolutely necessary um, for any virus to keep going. It has to replicate in a host cell. So we call them obligate intracellular parasites. That means they must grow inside a cell. There are also bacteria that are obligate intracellular parasites. Um, viruses are crazy in that way. They aren't, they don't grow. They don't get bigger. They are assembled at full size. So the cell is kind of like a machine that builds um, the virion. So the virion does not change size. It just gets made at its size. Um, and that's inside of a host cell. And um, that process of replication is going to depend on what the host cell is. So we will look at um, a bacteriophage first because that's the, s the simplest situation and then we'll look at animal viruses and you'll see there are some steps that are different between them because of the host, how different the hosts are. Um, and the, the big thing is that animal cells do endocytosis so animal viruses use endocytosis to get into cells. Uh, bacteria and archaea don't have vesicles. They don't use endocytosis or exocytosis because they are smaller than a vesicle um, and because they have cell walls, so it wouldn't make any sense anyway. Um, so a uh, bacteriophage can't use endocytosis to get into a cell. So if we look at bacteriophage first, um, they have to go through five steps. The first one is attach, attachment or absorption. They are the same thing. It's just chemically we think of it as absorbing. Biochemically we think of it as attaching. It's the same process. And so where does that happen? Kind of like here. This is the phage. This is the cell. The phage attaches. And then penetration is when it injects its nucleic acid into the cell. So it has to enzymatically digest the cell wall. Um, and then enzymatically push the um, nucleic acid into the cytoplasm. Then um, somehow this nucleic acid has to have instructions on it that this cell will follow um, to make the pieces of new virions, to make new nucleic acids, to make the capsid and capsomeres, to make anything else the virion would have in it. Um, and then maturation or assembly, these are the same thing. It's the process of fully assembling the virions. Um, and this all happens in the cytoplasm in a bacterial virus. And then the last thing is release. And this is where um, a bacteriophage is typically going to lyse the cell and get out that way. So the cell dies during this process. So in a little more detail, um, the first two steps are attachment and penetration. Attachment is very specific. This is where we think about um, what receptors the virus is looking for on the host cell. So again, back to COVID, we talk about the ACE2 receptor and cells that display that. That is what matters for attachment. And there's talk of um, one of the mutants that spreads faster. One of the things it does is attach more strongly to that same receptor. This is the very uh, specific step that can determine a virus's tissue tropism. Um, though for bacteriophage, there are no tissues. Bacteria don't have tissues, so it really is just the host range there. And then penetration, again, is what I said. Um, biosynthesis is, is the complicated part because that's where the cell has to um, translate um, RNA 
Well, biosynthesis is complicated because the cell has to, um, well, if it's a DNA virus, like what we're looking at, it has to transcribe the genes and then translate them to make proteins. Um, and the, what do those proteins do? Well, the first proteins are going to change the cell's behavior. Um, the virus is going to change the, the way the cell acts. And specifically, um, typically they take over protein production. So they're going to um, kind of hijack that system. Some viruses are going to break down the host DNA, and that will ultimately kill the cell. Some will um, disrupt host transcription. Some will disrupt host uh, translation, as all this stuff we can understand. Um, maturation and uh, assembly and release are all pretty straightforward. The more detail you look in, the more you try to understand these at the biochemical level, the more complex they get. These are all incredibly complicated, um, but we can understand what's happening without going into that level. Uh, let's see, let's keep going. So then we look at animal viruses and how they replicate. And again, they're different because they get in in a different way. They can use endocytosis or membrane fusion. Um, and that means once they get into the cell, what gets in is the capsid and it has to be broken open. So that, that means the animal virus has to uncoat. And then um, eukaryotic cells are just different. They're more complicated. So in a eukaryotic cell, there's a nucleus. That's where the DNA is. That's where transcription happens. And then messenger RNAs are sent into the cytoplasm. That's where translation happens. Some translation happens, well, the proteins get made essentially in the uh, lumen of the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and then they get sent through vesicles to the Golgi, and they get sent through vesicles all over the cell. Bacteria don't have anything like that. Um, and so animal viruses have to take control of all of those systems or use all of those systems. And um, that's what I'm talking about with maturation and release. Um, animal viruses will tend to use something similar to exocytosis or membrane fusion to get out of a cell. Okay, animal viruses have the same general um, the same general goal as what bacteriophage have. They want to make more virions, but they have to take control of a different kind of cell to do it. And so that means they have to add a completely new step. They have to add an uncoating step. Um, and let's see, these are similar to what happens in a bacteriophage, um, or at least attachment is. Penetration is different because instead of injecting the nucleic acid, the whole capsid goes into the into the host cell so this is the two sort of situations we we get um, in different viruses where what we've done is draw the cell membrane like this or we've drawn the cell membrane like this and what we're showing is two different ways animal viruses will get into cells this is going to be endocytosis or receptor mediated endocytosis so the spike proteins on this on this virion are going to attach to various receptors on the cell surface. Ultimately, that is going to form kind of a sphere around them, and that will pinch off when this touches this, and then this virus will be inside a vesicle in the cytoplasm. This virion will be inside a vesicle. Um, the virion has to have a way of getting out of the vesicle, so it has to have a way of breaking that open. And then it has to have a way of getting the nucleic acids out of the capsid. So there has to be some way of breaking this open also. If they use membrane fusion, this makes use of the envelope. Remember, there's a lipid bilayer um, in enveloped viruses. And so um, with membrane fusion, what happens is the cell, or sorry, the the virion gets really close to the cell membrane by attaching to lots of other molecules on the cell membrane, and ultimately the membranes fuse. Um, and so then what would happen is uh, this would become cytoplasm, this would become inside the cell. Um, it, 
Imagine two soap bubbles touching each other and becoming one soap bubble. That's what this is like. Um, and so what that does is that leaves the, um, that leaves the envelope in the cell membrane. So this envelope fuses with the cell membrane and it stays behind here. And the capsid ends up in the cytoplasm. And the capsid has to somehow release the nucleic acid. So a lot, of, um, a lot of viruses do both of these, whichever one happens first, um, seems to be what they do. So I know um, influenza can do both, uh, SARS-CoV-2 can do both, and those are the two viruses we're going to look at in the most detail. Um, uncoding, we won't get into how it works, but again, that's getting the nucleic acid out of the capsid. Um, biosynthesis is going to be tricky. This is where the capsid or the capsomeres have to be made. Those are the capsid proteins. Any viral enzymes that it's going to need have to get made. Spike proteins have to get made. Um, new nucleic acids have to be made. So it has to copy the genome so that, that can be put into new, um, what do you call it? Virions, new virions. This is the step where the genome type matters. So if it's RNA or DNA, if it's positive sense RNA or negative sense single-stranded RNA, that is going to dictate what happens during biosynthesis. These jobs all have to get done, but how that works depends on what kind of genome they have. Um, maturation and assembly, you'll see they have to take over um, a lot of parts of the cell, like the endomembrane complex, the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi, the vesicles. Oops. Um, okay, and I'll show you, I'll show you this um, in some diagrams, and it will make more sense. When we go through um, in detail and we look at how influenza replicates, you'll see these in action. There will be a few extra things happening because any real virus is more complicated than this, but you will also, once you work through it, you'll understand it. And then the last thing is release, and that's um, either breaking open the cell and killing it, or um, leaving through a process like exocytosis. And in cases where the virus leaves through exocytosis, it's not like the cell is happy. The host cell is now a factory for making these uh, virus particles. So the cell is now a zombie that just makes virions. Um, and so this is a diagram from your textbook that shows uh, the different steps. And this would be um, an exercise you could do. What they have in the textbook is little numbers up here. And the numbers for each of these steps correspond to numbers here. So I don't know. See if you can figure out which number would be which. Uh, it's not meant to be challenging here. It's just a thing you could do. And it's always good to look at different diagrams of the same thing to see what do the artists show the same way, what do they show in different ways, um, and why do they choose to draw certain things. That's enough for this video. In the next video, we're going to look at um, biosynthesis and how it differs between different types of viruses, um, and that will be its own thing. We need to take some time with that. So I'll see you there.